The human brain is one of the most mysterious and amazing objects that we know of. How is it developed? How does it work? And how do we study the brain? Those three questions and more are the focus of this video. The human brain develops from the anterior part of the neural tube. As you learned in the last video, during development the neural plate forms from signals from the notochord, in which it folds and creates the neural tube. The anterior, near the head, Part of the tube develops to become the brain, and the posterior, or inferior, near the back, part of the tube develops into the spinal cord. This image shows the gradual development of the brain in early stages. Interestingly, the brain stops developing around 25 years old, which is a long, drawn-out process that happens in humans, but not in other primates. In its developed form, different parts of the brain have different functions. The frontal lobe controls motor activity and is associated with higher order functioning and cognition. The parietal lobe is responsible for touch sensation as well as spatial navigation. The temporal lobe is involved in auditory processing and language comprehension. And the occipital lobe controls visual processing and is responsible for sight perception. Additionally, the cerebellum manages unconscious motor functions of the brain such as balance and movement coordination. The brainstem, located here, controls involuntary processes in the body. This system is called the autonomic nervous system and functions without us cognitively having to think about it. Taking a look at this diagram, these are all processes that occur without us actively telling our brain to do them. For example, if we walk into a bright room, we don't think about the pupils in our eyes contracting, though they do it anyways. There are two different types of autonomic responses, called sympathetic and parasympathetic responses. Parasympathetic describes autonomic processes that occur when the body is resting or relaxing, where sympathetic describes when the body is actively engaged in a fight or flight response. The brainstem itself can be broken down into three distinct parts, one of which is the base, called the medulla. The medulla controls very important autonomic processes like swallowing, breathing, and heart rate via a signal to the SA node. In addition to the structures you have already learned, there are three more parts of the brain that require some attention. First, the visual cortex is located in the back of the brain. This is where signals from photoreceptors are processed which gives us our visual perception or sight. Next. Broca's area is located within the frontal lobe of the left hemisphere only, not the right. This area is responsible for speech production. If damaged, individuals cannot produce meaningful speech even though they try to. Lastly, the nucleus accumbens is part of the brain that secretes neurotransmitters responsible for pleasure, like dopamine or satiety, which means you feel fed or gratified, and this is done by serotonin. It is the reason that both sex and eating are activities that bring pleasure to the body, accomplished by some neurons firing in the nucleus accumbens. I know what you're thinking. You were just told a bunch of information about how the brain works, but how do scientists know all of this? Humans have many different ways of figuring out what certain parts of the brain are responsible for. These methods include animal experimentation, autopsies, lesions, and fMRI science. In animal experimentation, we can light up certain parts of the organism's brain and watch their behavior. Similarly, if people have brain damage or lesions in specific parts of their brain, we can interpret their behavior to see what that section of the brain is responsible for. Autopsies tell us a great deal about the brain through the dissection of the brain itself. If someone had a neurological disorder, we can analyze their brain post-mortem to identify what part of the brain was affected. Lastly, an fMRI, which stands for Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging, allows scientists to watch the flow of blood in the brain in real time. The person being studied can then be asked questions, and if blood moves to a specific spot, it means that that specific section of the brain is working. The cerebral cortex of the brain is described as the outermost layer of tissue, seen in this image as these darker folds. 
This particular part of the brain is highly developed in humans compared to other organisms. One reason that the cerebral cortex is so large in humans is because it is heavily folded. All of these folds greatly increase the surface area, allowing more tissue to exist inside of the skull. Take a quick look at the brains of the rat, cat, and chimpanzee. While there are a few folds, none of them can compete with the folds and surface area seen in the human brain. The cerebral hemispheres are known for producing higher order thinking, which we think is one of the reasons why humans are the most intelligent organisms on the planet. As stated before, the cerebral hemispheres are responsible for higher order functions in the brain. Because these hemispheres are split into two, right and left, each hemisphere is responsible for different roles. The right hemisphere of the brain processes creativity, spatial ability, and recognition of faces, places, and objects. The left hemisphere of the brain is responsible for speech and language comprehension, analysis and calculations, time and sequencing, and recognition of letters and numbers. Information can be passed between these two hemispheres through a structure called the corpus callosum. When the brain processes information, it does it in a flipped manner. What do I mean by this? Information from the right side of the body gets processed in the left side of the brain. This also means that the left side of the brain controls movement of the right side of the body. In the opposite manner, the right side of the brain controls and receives signals from the left side of the body. The human brain, because it is large and has the ability to do so much, uses a very large amount of energy. Our brain is only responsible for 2% of our body mass, but takes up about 20% of the energy that we consume to maintain its functioning. This massive energy to mass consumption ratio is not seen in any other organ in the body. There are many ways that doctors can identify if the brain is damaged. One common test is to look at a person's pupil to see if it contracts when a bright light is shined into it. Remember that the movement of the pupil in the eye is an autonomic process controlled by the brainstem. If the pupil does not move, it means that person's brainstem is not functioning properly, which also means that their other autonomic functions could also not be working properly. This would characterize the person as being brain dead. On the other hand, if a person is non-responsive and their pupil still contracts, it means their brainstem is still working and their other autonomic processes could be working as well. This would be a situation where the person is kept alive in a vegetative state if they are unresponsive to everything else.